Hello, listeners. I'm Tim Shadamas. And as you can see, voice loves fall. I love fall. And joining me as always is my talented and beautiful co-hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome all listeners to Spooky Season. With this coffee and many, many more, I'll be able to conquer Monday. Spooky. Spooky. <laughs> Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for that. Why don't we jump right into the stories while enjoying my morning? Cup of brew. What did you make today? Today, you're going to have some blueberry, dried apple, hibiscus, elderberries, rose hips, pomegranate bits, and some cornflower petals. Wow. Oh, yes. I really wanted this to be wild. Oh, yeah. That's a four out of five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of berry in there. Thank you. I think it's because of the elderberry together with the blueberries. It's really good. For any listeners wanting to follow along, all story links are in the description below. For our first story, it's a not safe for work. Oh. Oh, yes. Starting Spicy Monday. Am I the a-hole for telling a friend that I can't be there after her f*** buddy died? My friend started seeing a guy who told her he was married and had kids. He just wanted a sexual relationship. She was okay with that, she said. Six months later, she was mad that he didn't want to leave his wife for her, and she went to tell his wife. So that ended their little setup, but his wife forgave him. Four years later, my friend contacts him again on Facebook. She apologizes and tells him that now she's ready for just a sexual relationship. Everything's going great till six months later, and after a quick morning session, he tells my friend he's not feeling well. He drives home and dies after getting home. My friend finds out because she doesn't hear from him for some days and calls a mutual friend of theirs who tells her. She's hysterical when she calls me. I get that it's a shock. His wife has found their secret messages on his phone. My friend finds out the date of his burial. She insists she's going. I tell her not to. She attends. His sister tells her to go home. Every time we talk, She's talking about him and how she's visiting his grave and is leaving little trinket hearts and frames by his grave. I asked her if she thought about how his wife and kids might feel about this, but she insists that she's in mourning and this is her way of dealing with it. I might be insensitive, but I tell her I find it disrespectful and that if this was her husband, would she want her dead husband's f buddy doing that? So in her own words, I'm insensitive and probably an a-hole. I'm just confused when she had told me many times that the rendezvous was just sex, and that's all she wanted. So am I the a-hole for putting some distance between this friend and myself and not being there as much as I probably would have had it been a friend or family member of hers who had died? Edit. I know many are questioning my own morals by being her friend, there's many things I wish I had done differently. After his death, she called me and was hysterical. Her wanting to go to his funeral and now visiting his grave is something I've tried to talk her out of it. I've never supported any of what she's doing with this guy. We are low contact now and I'm coming to terms with that. I need to leave this lifelong friend alone. We've known each other since we were little. Our moms know each other and all that, so it's created some contention. Am I the a-hole? This is a spicy meatball. What a way to start off Monday. So let's get into the story. OP, does she give us her age? No, she doesn't give her age. There was a little bit of back and forth in the comments when it came to one commenter and the OP, but she does give us an approximate age range of the individual that passed away. And he was apparently in his 40s. Okay. I guess she meets a gentleman four or five years prior. Correct. They have a, what sounds like, affair. Because I don't believe in the story that she says that he's in an open relationship. Correct. Okay. That's a very big detail. In fact, she tries to spill the beans so that uh he'll leave his wife for her. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So she does go into that relationship knowing that they're just f buddy status. Correct. But for her, it sounds like there was ulterior motives. Oh, yes. This wasn't that. She caught the feels and wanted a relationship with him. She already knew that he was married and had children. Now, don't get me wrong. 
He was a cheater too. He's just as bad in this story. No, I'm not trying to defend a cheater, but what I am saying is it's really bad. The lengths to which someone goes just to get what they want. Yeah. Yeah, this one was a little extra. So she does try to make that more of a relationship. He says no. She goes to his wife and tries to destroy their marriage. Even though, again, he already destroyed it before it ever happened because he cheated. That I think everyone can agree on. And I guess OP's friend and him don't talk for four or five years after the fact. Correct. And then all of a sudden, I think she works through her feelings. And now she wants to have the f benefits again. Again, though, it's for the same reasons the first time it happened. She clearly loves this man. But those feelings are not reciprocated. They are not. And she's not seeing that. Or she's doing the goggles where she's hoping that he'll change. Sure, seeing the relationship for what it could offer, not what it is. Those get people in really bad situations like this one. So the guy clearly did not change. He's back to, I'm certain he was cheating on his wife the last four or five years anyway. But he just got back with OP's friend to add to the rotation. I guess they have a morning session in their words. And then he dies later that day. I don't know what of. They don't say. Actually, oh. our OP actually says that he died from a stroke. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I I understand he's a cheater, but... Life still, should still be treated with respect. Yes, that's how I feel about that. So he does pass later that day. Our OP's friend does not know about this for, I guess, a little around a week, a couple days. She says that she wasn't she immediately made aware. Later. And then... For some reason, she thinks it's appropriate to figure out the funeral date and then go to it. To the point where the family was telling her to leave. She had friends. She had the OP tell her that this is not something that should be happening. OP's friend pushes beyond that. And I guess she does go. You knew that relationship was not what you were trying to pen it out to be. I'm not certain what's going through her friend's head. I, I would know. say it stems on obsession because she's going to his grave well after he's gone. Leaving trinkets for him. She needs to go get herself some help because your friend sounds very lost. I don't believe, because our OP is asking simply, is she an a-hole for stepping away from her friend? Correct. I don't believe that that would make her the a-hole. You're no better than the company you keep. And if that's the type of person you have around you, and I do understand you have quite a history with this friend. She's been a childhood friend. You're parents are friends know each other so you grew up with this person but no one stays the same as they were people change although again i would say please talk to your friend guide her into some type of counseling because she does sound like she needs it well the consensus is that our op is not the a-hole but it really was somewhat split a lot of individuals were saying that because she was still even considering being a friend to this person. And after what a lot of people see as morally incorrect between not just having an affair, but then the almost stalker type agenda that she had afterwards when it comes to visiting this man's grave, the fact that she could still, that our OP could still consider being friends with her, people say that it made them both equally a-holes because of this. Is that fair to do to someone? I don't know if I see that like that. Neither do I. Especially when it sounds like some more things are going on than just that. Because you wouldn't be pushed to that type of extreme if there wasn't other things going on. And I agree with that as well. Could I we think not just say that she's just trying to be a good friend and try to figure it out with her? I agree. And I think the one thing that in my mind redeems me for our OP is... She has told her friend that this is not good. She can't make her friend stop. The same way she couldn't make her friend stop having an affair. Yeah. I equate this to gossip. If you hear through the grapevine that someone's doing something that's morally incorrect, does that mean you now have to take a stand and make it right? No, but I would still lean into the fact that they've been childhood friends. And yes, this is... And I can vouch for this. When you have someone that you see in a light that you've met a long time ago, it's hard to split that person that you have a vision of and who they used to be and who they are now. It's really hard to take those two and separate them and 
pick that. And especially if we're talking about someone in their 20s, which we think she's at. Late 20s, early 30s. They're still probably working out what the hell their life means and what relationships are and those type of things. So I understand that point of view and going, look, it's not your responsibility. And by you having that type of company around says a lot more about you than them. I can get that. But I also can see where if someone's going, I know they're in there. I'm trying to get them to the other side. That's why I don't believe she's the a-hole. But I don't, I can't say for a fact that that's where ROP is coming from. I just, maybe I'm putting too much of me into the story. And I can see a little bit of that. (laughs) I think in this regards, based on what our OP said, their mothers were really close together. Yeah, They stemmed a friendship from this, but because of how close their families are, even her doing low to no contact, they would still have contact simply because their families are that intertwined. Now, there was a very interesting conversation between our OP and a commenter. And I have to say, I don't agree with the commenter and their stance. The commenter essentially said, this is your friend. And because essentially you didn't stop her from doing this before, it is now your responsibility to stay by her side. No, I don't agree with that. I also don't agree with that. And I find it funny on my end how our OP said, look, if you think she needs to have a friend like that, you can be her friend. You could step in. I give you her information. I find it really interesting when it comes to individuals who believe that they should take responsibility of someone else simply because of how long you've known them. I think that can be a very destructive and toxic path to take. Everyone has the ability to choose and decide how they want to live their lives. And I understand your viewpoint on our OP. She's got this vision. She's grown up with this childhood friend. I bet you four years ago when this whole affair started, she really looked down on it. But maybe a part of her hoped that once the relationship was done, that was it. And maybe it would be just a mistake in her life that she would have learned from. Sure. And you some, you do have to let your friends and other people around you in your life walk the paths they choose to take at the time. But to say that ROP is responsible for her friend no, because of these bad choices, I don't think so. And if anything, her coming to the forum is really questioning her own morals on the things that she's allowing to exist in her life. I have to commend it. It's a very difficult situation that our OP is in. Sure, she's losing a lifelong friend and understanding that, again, like I said before, the person you met when you were younger is not the person that you're dealing with today and they're different. It's hard to conceptualize that and go, yes, they're not the person I met. People change. That they do. Well, now that we're getting past this first initial story, let's see if our next story can help us de-stress. Am I the a-hole for trying to calm myself under stress? My wife was in the hospital having emergency surgery, and I watched porn while she was recovering in the hospital. I was in the same room with her, and she was asleep and had no idea. I got horny and needed to take care of it. She obviously couldn't help me out with that. I ended up telling her after she asked me about something unrelated. I misunderstood what she said and basically ended up telling on myself. She is so mad and says she is heartbroken. I didn't do anything wrong. Why is she so angry? I was stressed out and needed a release. Am I the a-hole? We're just getting into all the not safe for work stuff, huh? That's right. (laughs) All right. Well, let's get into this one. Does OP give their age? Does not. Okay. But inside the comment section, they seem a bit confused about how other people view what they did. All right. Well, I have questions. It sounds like a lot of people had questions. So he is just in the hospital because it was some surgery she went through. Correct. And it was post-surgery. Okay. So he's there as support and to be around. Yes. (laughs) She's sleeping on the bed recovering and he's sitting next to her, apparently very stressed out. Very stressed out that he needed to do that in a hospital? In a hospital. Okay. Where she's recovering right next to him, by the way. My question would be, I can understand stress. I think if you've been on this earth for any amount of time, you understand that stress sucks and everyone has their way of de-stressing. And apparently this gentleman, for him, he de-stresses by watching corn next to his 
healing wife in the hospital? Yes. Did he do it right next to her? Correct. No, like in the chair. In the chair. <laughs> next to her. Right, right next to the bed. What? Wah. He reveals that to us? He like actually, he's literally sitting next to her bed while she's recovering. Uh, I was in the same room with her and she was asleep and had no idea is his exact words. Apparently she's asleep. She'll never know. All right. Well, I guess we'll sum this one up. Obviously, you're the a-hole. I'm shocked that you did it right next to her in the recovery room from we don't know what, but you decided to tell her after she awakens. Although it was on accident. My question would be real fast. What question would she have asked we to don't. have elicited him ratting himself out? I wish we knew. He doesn't unless, even tell us that. Unless he's all like, hey, did you see that? Or I heard you do something. And then he's all like, wait, oh, you heard me. I tried to equate it how he could have tattled on himself and then been like, all right, now I'm going to spill the beans about what I just did. Could you imagine you're just sitting there as his wife and going, that's not what I asked. You're in a lot of pain. Why did you Why did you tell me that? that's not what I asked? I asked for some juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lanta. Well, the consensus, he's definitely the a-hole. A lot of individuals actually spoke out and said, if you don't see why this is wrong, you need to seek help. Because this sounds like an addiction. If you cannot control yourself, a lot of individuals actually put out there, you pleasuring yourself is a natural course of who you are as a person sure that you shouldn't some, be ashamed of that some people do get ashamed to do it and some people don't it's just whoever you are and however it is that you decide you want to deal with your body however there is a time and a place for it time and a place and this was not the time it was not the place and if you can't see that it was not the time and not the place it sounds like our poster has some form of addiction that he needs to work through. Possibly. Now, whether that sunk in, not quite sure. Well, it probably didn't because he thought this was funny enough to post on Reddit. It actually wasn't funny. A lot of individuals thought that this was fake and tried to call him out on it. He just kept coming back with, I'm just trying to find the reasons as to why it is that this seems to be a very bad thing when it didn't hurt anybody and was helping me. It comes back to just have a little self-awareness. Yeah. Or self-control. I just want the, the OJ. <laughs> Not for you to tell me this. Oh, dear Lord. Well, let's go on to our next story and see how this relationship is stemming. Am I the a-hole for criticizing my girlfriend's career choices? Oh, bring it. My girlfriend, 22 female, is a nurse aide. I, 38 male, have advised her that she should pursue a career in nursing, but she does not want to. She told me she wants to become a paramedic eventually, that she enjoyed working as a nurse aide. I actually told her it was wrong to enjoy the job as a nurse aide, as it is a lowly position and you literally wipe asses and get attacked by demented patients all day. She tried to argue with me and tell me that I didn't have to be so negative. However, I was at my wit's end with her when she told me she finally enrolled in an EMT program. I got angry and upset and called her stupid for picking that as a career choice. Am I the a-hole for getting upset at my girlfriend for her awful career choices? This is another spicy meatball. So we'll start with the facts. OP is 38 years old and his girlfriend is 22. There is a large experience gap there. And different priorities for the two of them. Different life stages, all of that. So given that knowledge, he speaks to his girlfriend as if he is her father, not a partner. There's a power dynamic that is screaming from this story and it's gross. I don't hear anything supportive come out of his mouth outside of, I know better, you're going to do what I want you to do. And then when his girlfriend doesn't do what he wants her to do, he cries about it. I think you're gross because you guys aren't on the same wavelength, nor in the same stages of life. Normally, I really don't care what people's ages are past a certain point. But when you're talking about someone in their early 20s, a lot of the time those people do need to figure out life and not go from being under their parents' roof straight into being under another parent's roof. There's no actual growth that happens for those people. They go from one box to the next. I don't think that's healthy. 
That's a good way to put it. I definitely agree with that analogy. Your girlfriend's found something that she really likes to do in the medical industry. Yes, you may know better in your mind that that's maybe something she doesn't want to do. But for her, that is something she wants to do. And that's all that matters. Not what you want her to do. And if she needs to go through life and step through those things to gain the experience and the knowledge, then she has to be able to do that. But you putting your foot down and trying to control her, I think that's gross. You can try to guide her. There's always suggestions and talking to each other. That's a good thing. But in this situation, it does sound like you've already done that. And then you've gone beyond that. You become abusive. And if in the face of it, she says, yes, I understand what you're trying to tell me, but I still want to do it. Then that should have been the end of it. You're a clown and I hope she gets some perspective on you from other people. Well, the consensus, our poster is definitely the a-hole. In fact, many of them commented and said, you are an abuser. And we hope this was just click rage bait. And if it's not, overwhelmingly, you're an abuser. Well, let's go ahead and move away from this type of relationship and see what's going on in this family. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother it's pathetic that he can't do the basics of what his wife did? On phone, sorry. I love my sister-in-law and brother. They have two kids and my sister-in-law, Rachel, was a kinda a stay-at-home mom. She worked from home part-time, but also took care of the kids and all the chores. I was over multiple times and the house was spotless. Really, I thought she was just extra cleaning when she had guests, but no. When I had my kids, she showed me her schedule. She would be up at five for meal prepping for the whole day. Like she never stopped. And a lot of her tips helped me with my own home. Now, my brother lost his job and it was decided that Rachel would go back to work full time and he would stay at home. The kids are in kindergarten and first grade. He has this on easy mode. I've been over to help sometimes since he just sucks at it. The house is always a mess. The kids are usually late to school. He asked me to drive them after the school talk to him. He doesn't cook. It's just sad. He got in a huge argument with his wife since dinner wasn't done and she had to make it. He was ranting about how it's unfair and that he's trying. I told him it's pathetic he can't do the basic of what his wife did. He has eight hours free and he can't keep the house clean. I told him she will divorce him if he doesn't stop being lazy and figure it out. He laughed after calling me a jerk and my mom is now on me for what I said. Am I the a-hole? Okay. Interesting story. So let me see if I understand the facts. OP is the sister. Correct. Now, she has a brother and a sister-in-law. They've had kids already and the sister-in-law has been the stay-at-home for the couple for a little bit. But she was also working part-time. Managing the home. Everything, it sounds like. Between kids, keeping things clean. There's a lot to do. Making sure people eat on time and working. And it sounds like Rachel got that all down pretty well. I guess there comes a time where our OP's brother loses his job. Him and his wife have a conversation. And now he takes over the stay-at-home duties. And then she goes full-time. Well, at that point, there's an understanding that once you take over as that parent in those roles, that you need to do them to a certain standard. Now, not everything can be the exact same. They are two different people. But the kids do need to still get to school on time. I don't know how you mess that one up. That's a little weird because, see, you're not only just affecting you, you're now affecting the kids. Dinner does need to be made in a timely manner. If you're taking over those duties, you need to take them seriously. Because, see, when he's lacking... When she comes home after work and she has to pick up that slack, you're just putting more on top of the pile. Obviously, that's going to create a lot of stress. Now, is ROP simply asking, is she the a-hole because she told her brother, hey, you need to get it together because you might lose her? Correct. Would that ever be bad to tell anyone? Give them a warning as to, hey, if you keep up with this type of stuff, this is what I see is happening no, I don't think that it's wrong to tell someone if you see something that's jarring. And this is, this one is because he's not, it sounds like he's not doing anything. The, the house is a mess. He's not cooking. The kids aren't getting to school on time. So tell me exactly what it is that you're doing on a daily basis that helps you and your family. Because if you're not contributing, then you're a part of the problem. That's very true. So I really do want to say that she's not the a-hole 
he's dropping the ball and, and he needs to be told that that's not fair for his wife to have to come home and then to have to cook. And then I'm certain there has to be some type of cleaning because again, she says that her brother leaves the house in a dirty state. So what's supposed to happen? Is she supposed to be as the sister looking in on this going, well, I'm just going to let the train wreck happen completely. Now you do have to let it run its course, but if you're the sister and you're that close to your brother, I don't see where it's wrong to have let him know, Hey, if you don't start getting things together and learning, cause right, no one, I'm not going to get upset with someone if they're a week in and they're trying to fumble with learning how to task manage everything. It gets a little overwhelming. There's a lot to do. If you're not aware of it and you step into it, there's a lot to do. Fine. I'll give you that. But after the first couple weeks and you're still acting like this, cause I don't know how long he's been going on like this, but do they answer that? I didn't see an answer for how long this has been going in particular. I got to assume it's probably gone on a little longer than it should. I would assume. Especially if she's well. coming to him with that for completely dropping the ball on his family, because you're going to put a lot of undue stress on your wife. And then you're going to be sitting there wondering in a, in a year why your marriage has gone down the tube and your wife wants nothing to do with you because you're sitting at home being lazy, telling other people while you don't work to drop off your children. Because you can't be bothered to wake up on time? No, that's not acceptable. Well, the consensus is that our OP is not the a-hole. In fact, let me go ahead and provide you with some updates that our poster gave us. For the first one, our poster actually says, thank you for the mac and cheese recipes. Sounds like there was a little bit of off-topic conversations regarding mac and cheese recipes. And then on to the real update. I love my sister-in-law. My mom apologized to me. Rachel sent my mom what the kitchen and house looks like, the messages from the school, and apparently a text argument about how he shouldn't be doing this. She gave him two options, get his shit together or get out. Additional, I learned a lot more about the situation and learned he wasn't packing the kids' lunches the last two days. I think he just broke his marriage. Inside of the comment section, our poster actually put down the straw that truly broke the camel's back, and it might seem like a small problem, but if this was enough to break the camel's back, apparently there was a lot going on. That's always how it works. And the issue was, apparently Rachel has asked her husband, please, when you use any kind of glass, when you use any kind of dish, take the extra four seconds and put it in the dishwasher. So they that, got a pile of dishes. and Correct. That was just the last straw. And I mean, it sounds like he's been doing a lot of things just half-assed. I think that his rant about saying that it's unfair, I think this seems to be very telling in how he views his role in this relationship. And it seems to be a very archaic kind of view where because he's a guy, he should be working and that's what he does. He brings the bread home. And as a woman, it's just natural. She just naturally cleans there's a ton of women out there that don't clean. There's a ton of men out there that clean very well. I think having these sort of stuck in role viewpoints, because for him, it's unfair that he has to clean. It's unfair that they're asking him to pick up his share. What is it unfair that he's doing when he's a stay at home? He has eight hours. Well, I don't know if he necessarily looks at life like that because he accepted the role to stay at home and be with the kids and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's necessarily that he has this archaic view on it. I think that he's just lazy. <laughs> like he signed up for it. He wasn't told to do it. This wasn't like, hey, you're in this circumstance where you can't get a job. So you're staying at home. I find it funny that you say that because our poster actually says he's pretty lazy. See, that's where I, I don't think he has this conceived notion. I just think he's just a lazy human. I hope that he's able to see it and work through it and become a better dad and husband to his family because it sounds like he's already dug a pretty deep hole for himself. I hope so. If anything, in the comment section where OP actually put way more details on the situation, one of my really big red flags is the school's literally sending notices saying, hey, your kid's not arriving on time is not something we'll accept. Yeah. And the fact that he hasn't picked just that up. He got a long way to go. Like I said, I just hope he starts realizing what he's doing to his family. You got to share the load equally. 
Well, let's go to our very last story on Monday and see what you think about this spicy story. Uh Uh-oh. Am I the a-hole for being too honest with my friends with benefits? This girl, 27 female, and I, 28 male, are long distance, but we're seeing where things were going up until a year ago. She visited a lot for months, but I decided not to pursue anything serious after she went back home. We remain long distance friends with benefits because our chemistry is amazing. We message and video call regularly. Last March, I told her that I had slept with a girl I had been pining over for months. I felt guilty when it happened. She said it was fine, and she's also been flirting and sending intimate messages to other guys. I felt horrible hearing that, and the fact that she didn't tell me beforehand. She apologized and said that they were all not serious. She didn't go all the way, and that I was the only one she currently messages like that. She asked if I still wanted to continue our arrangement, and I said yes. Two weeks ago, I opened up to her again and told her I had asked out another girl who said no, and I've been heartbroken for weeks. She consoled me. Afterwards, the intimate messages started feeling different and distant. I asked if something was up, but she said things were okay. Last week, I told her that I went on two dates with a new girl who I can see a future with. She tells me she's happy for me. I ask her if it's okay to hear stuff like this because I see her as one of my best friends, but I don't want her to feel weird. She says it's fine, but then she says that we should stop flirting and sending each other intimate messages and pictures. She said she started feeling it after I told her I was heartbroken and she felt wrong trying to be there for me as a shoulder to cry on and also be there for me intimately. She said she'd rather be a better friend than just friends with benefits. I agreed that it was inevitable, but suggested gradually stopping and that we didn't need to delete our messages slash pics slash videos until we were in a serious relationships. I randomly sent her a funny video to lighten the mood and told her that the new girl I'm seeing sent it to me, and then she said it was starting to feel weird now. I was confused because stuff like that is what you'd share to your best friends, right? She asked if I wanted her to share about her dating life as well. I said yes. She said there are two guys she's been messaging and even met up with. She said stuff happened with one of the guys. I told her I felt bad, and I felt like she's replaced me. I told her I haven't even done anything physical with the girls I talked about. She said I already knew she was doing these things from our call in March, but I assume she stopped after I said that it made me feel horrible. I told her I felt uncomfortable sharing that physical space with other guys, and that she didn't tell me until now. I told her I felt used. She didn't apologize like last time. She just kept asking why I was feeling this way and explaining her side. We haven't spoken since. Am I the a-hole for being upset with her? I've been transparent about everything, but apparently she doesn't feel the need to extend the same courtesy. What? Oh my lanta. This is a mess. Let's get into this story. Opie and the girl in question are in their late 20s. Correct. And he says it himself. This is a friends with benefits. He clearly does not understand the definition of friends with benefits. Because throughout the story, he definitely talks to her like they are in a boyfriend, girlfriend, monogamous relationship. It sounds like almost like it's monogamous on her part, but not on his. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. So I guess it sounds like they've been in a long distance friends with benefits situation for... A little over a year. Correct. And I guess it's been going well for them for a little while until I guess at some point he starts telling her about some of the women he's been talking to. Now for her, I don't think it bothered her because then she started opening up about what she was doing. Same deal. He hears it, but unfortunately for him, he's heard about it. And then for the girl involved, she just stops telling him about what she's doing outside of their chats. Because for her, she's definitely treated this as what it's supposed to be. So they have a conversation after this because he feels like the relationship has changed. He tells her that now he's dating someone. Like he's found someone to actually date, not friends with benefits. And for her, 
she kind of backs off at that point because she no longer really wants to be in a friends with benefit situation because he has a girlfriend. You, I can understand that. She's respecting boundaries. Exactly. Because after that, she tells him that she's also been on dates and seen people. So he replies back to her with how much he's hurt at this point because she's doing what he's doing. They're finding other people. It's a friends with benefits. That's supposed to be shifting to just friends. And that's what they talked about was, hey, let's be friends. But he says, I don't mind just being friends, but can we just slowly go from friends with benefits to friends? Which is really weird. I get really skeezy vibes off this guy just because he has a weird ownership over her. I don't understand why you'd be upset with someone in that situation. And she feels weird about the whole thing. And she has every right to be. I think you're 100% the a-hole. You really do need to relearn what it is that you're asking for out of relationships. Because you believe that you're in a friends with benefits, but you're treating everyone you're in those relationships as if you're their boyfriend and they need to treat you with a certain amount of respect and be exclusive. That's not how that works. You sound like you're very controlling. I'm certain that you probably got good perspective and (laughs) advice. And I hope you took it because you're a little older in the game to still be acting and treating other people that way, in my opinion. Well... The consensus on Reddit was definitely the a-hole. And I find it very funny. You say that you hope that he gained some perspective. But based on some of his comments, I don't think he truly did. His essential message inside of the comment section was, so I'm just supposed to accept that she lied to me. Here's where I break it down in my mind. They were trying to date long distance at the beginning of their relationship. And then they realized, hey, this works much better with friends with benefits. So they switched to friends with benefits. At some point in March, he starts talking to her about having feelings for other women. And I'm wondering if at some point she had hoped that maybe they would become something more than just friends with benefits. Because that's when the relationship for the two of them changed. And he says it. She becomes distant at that point. Because he's talking about feelings with other women. A lot of the times, not all the time, but a lot of it, women go into friends with benefits to see if it becomes something more than that. To build that physical into something emotional. Is that a good way to gauge and go into relationships? Nope. I don't think it's necessarily healthy. However, that is everyone's choice on what they'd like to do. Now, here's where things get twisted. While he's talking about pining over other women, she also says, hey, I've also been kind of flirting with these guys. And then he says, you know, you talking about that really hurt me. So what does she do? She just stops talking about it. They're not in an open relationship. It's strictly friends with benefits. And if what she says has to hurt him, she just won't talk about it anymore. Sure. And she doesn't. And then when he says to her that he's starting to date someone seriously, she's the one that actually makes the initiative to say, look, I think it's a little weird that we still have the friends with benefits then. We should really cut back on the intimate messages and the pictures then. And he goes, wait, 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 hold on. Don't just cut it off from me. I want you to slow it down, which I think is really weird and yeah, very skeezy. And then on top of that, then he tries to essentially share his relationship and what he's doing with her. And she calls it out. She says, look, that's a little weird. And then he goes, well, I mean, you can talk to me about whatever you're doing. And then what should she do? She talks to him about what she's doing. And then he does the same thing again, but then accuses her of lying because she respected him by not trying to hurt him talking to him about it. He sounds very manipulative. And that's how it came off to me in the comment section when he was trying to paint himself as some victim. But these are his words explaining everything. There's no way that he's the victim here because they clearly had certain boundaries that he walked over. Sure. Well, like I said before, he misunderstands what friends with benefits means. It's not a full on relationship, but he's treating it as it is. Only on their side. 
Not it, his. Exactly. It has to be monogamous on their side. But for him, it would be a poly relationship. Yeah, I can brag about what I'm doing with all these other people. But if you do the same, you're wrong. And now I'm hurt. And you need to know that you need to be exclusive to me. But I don't have to be exclusive to you. That's not friends with benefits, dude. <laughs> well, I would like to hear what our commenters think about this. Mess. <laughs> yeah, it's a very messy story. You can't even say like it's a mess of youth because he's almost 30. You're very right. Gross. Well, was that our last story? That was our last story. What an interesting way to end off the spiciest of Mondays. Yes. Your stories kept bringing it. I try. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, you've seen the world, what you carry in your heart. If you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We are regularly posting on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Well, as always, listeners, we look forward to hearing your opinions in the comments below. What did you think about today's stories? And what do you think about our new decor? And remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it on the internet.